the best I can You were born without a father A full grown woman from the start Nothing but love was inside you Hello and welcome to France 24's weekly music show. I'm Marjorie Hash. My guest this week grew up in East Los Angeles, surrounded by musical instruments and creative flair. The youngest of three brothers, he first made a name for himself as a sculptor, while his brothers, Joel and Ben, respectively became an author and a rock star. About 10 years ago, our guest decided it was time to explore music as a creative outlet with the help of the alto guitar. Since then, he produced four albums full of blues and soul and is literally about to embark on a tour of France. Peter Harper, thank you so much for joining us. It is such a pleasure to be here, Marjorie. Thank you for having me. Uh, How are you? Good, good. I, I think that you have quite a relationship with France. Can you tell us a little bit about it? I love this country. Je t'aime France. <laughs> it's, you know, it's... Uh, when, I, when I got here for the very first time, for the very first show, uh, there was a thousand people who showed up to that very first show, and uh, it was at Board Riders Cabreton, which is where I'm playing uh, this actually on this tour again for the second time. And and um, and when I pulled up, I was in this little car from these people who picked me up, and I said, "Who are these people here to see? They, they're here to see you." And I said, "Yeah, but who else is playing tonight?" And they were like, "No, it's just you." And I, thought, oh, this is incredible. I didn't speak any French at that time. And since then, I've been trying to grab the language and learn it. And I'm so grateful for all the love and appreciation that everybody always shows me every time I get here and tour, that it's just, it's, it's g literally a love affair. I love it here. People genuinely love and appreciate music, and it's an honor to be here. Uh -huh. And you're like extra reasons for coming here also, so your label is European, and your brother, one of your brothers, Joel, lives in France as well. So That's correct. The ties are, are, are even more there. Now, what I find interesting about you is also that you started to make music when you were 38. And when you went about, you know, finding a record deal, a studio, everything, people initially turned you down. We're like, oh, do you Everybody. Control? Everybody really? literally said, no, you can't do it. You're too old. You can't. It's too late. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and you know, no is, is uh, no means no in the bedroom, which is a really important point. But. In the workplace, uh, no is an alternate form of yes. You just haven't found the right sort of route to mm -hmm. it, right? And so uh, I just didn't, you know, I just wasn't having any of that. I was like, you know what? I, the music is there. I have to let it out. And if people don't want to hear it, then I won't be able to build a tour with it and I won't be able to do anything with it and it'll all fade. Mm -hmm. And here we are. The only way forward. So that's oh. good. Resilience is uh, something quite interesting. How about we check out uh, one of the videos for your last album? It's uh, the title track written before the pandemic and it's called Survive. Yes, indeed. I know you're coming for me, even though I cannot see. Mine's gonna snap like a rubber band. Paranoia, feeling my Too. Survive. Excellent video for an excellent track on your last record. Thank you very much. And now this, the theme of perseverance, or perceived perseverance, more like that's how you pronounce it, uh, kind of runs through your latest record. And it was written before the global pandemic. Yes. Um, I know your next album is in the pipeline. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about the themes of what to expect on that one? Yeah, there's a, it's a real mix. Uh, there's everything from uh, like really gentle, sort of soft love songs to uh, very aggressive, of politically active music that's you know we're coming uh, and it's it's a it's a great mix of music that's going to have people dancing and bobbing their heads and getting out of their seats and also just like you know that moment where you're thinking like okay I got to set the mood uh, there'll be some of that too so it's just a real nice blend of sounds mm -hmm. yeah. that's exciting so you're getting to settle in a bit more with this this previous record um, you were a, an, a sculptor before an artist yes. what are the similarities in your the creative process for both sculpting and songwriting that is a great question so I approach music the same way I approach sculpture I'm literally instead of sculpting clay or bronze or wax uh, I'm sculpting sound and so Every motion I make when I pluck the strings creates a sound wave that, whilst isn't visibly, 
you know, isn't visual, is audible. And, and the shape of that sound wave determines to a large degree, the mood of the audience. And so I really try to take those sound waves and shape them in a way that leave people feeling loved and leave pe people feeling happy. And just that sentiment of like, oh, yes, life is actually still good, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and that's so important to me. We live in these crazy times where things are so difficult and complicated and post COVID and still COVID and all that other stuff and war, et cetera. Uh, it's nice to have sort of a breath of fresh air. Mm -hmm. uh, what I found interesting when I was doing my research on you is that when you were 19, you moved to Zimbabwe yes. as part of your exchange year, you were doing political science, I believe. Correct. How, wow. how did oh, you end up? Wow. Yeah. How did you end up into <laughs> doing sculpture uh, in Zimbabwe? And what was that like as an experience? Uh, unbelievable. Just so spectacular. So I, uh, I was on a year-long study abroad program that was only supposed to last four months. And I convinced them to let me stay a full year. Like, I'm not really quite sure how, but I just kind of didn't, uh, speaking of relentless, right, and perseverance. Um, and so when I started studying at Muzalikazi's Arts and Crafts, they, it was because the school didn't know what to do with me. They were like, well, technically it's kind of summertime and we don't know where to put you and I, what, do we, what do you want to do? And I said, I love to sculpt and if there's a place I could go to study, that would be great. So they sent me to Muzalikazi's. Um, to which they rejected me and said, no, you can't study here. And I, again, just, well, you know, maybe we could find a way. And I didn't give up on the no, you know, no, again, people say, no, you know, when you have a dream, nobody wants that dream to come true except you. So you've got to chase it and you got to push it. And you can't always just say, oh, they told me no and hang your head and walk away. So through, you know, an extended conversation, we were able to build something. And from there, they let me in. They were like, okay, we'll give it a try. We'll see how it goes. Mm -hmm. And I was there every day, or I got there an hour early, I left there an hour late, I put in all the time, I was just, I helped clean up, I did everything, you know, that I could to just make sure that I wasn't a burden on the system. Um, and it was a beautiful experience, really one of a kind experience, and, and I had learned to speak Shona while I was living in Zimbabwe, which was really fun, and uh, although Muslikazis was in the place where they spoke Ndebele, so I was sort of a fish out of water. Similar to actually coming to France, where everybody has been so warm and so kind and so sort of, you know, uh, embracing of my existence, uh, Zimbabwe is a very similar experience where people were just very kind and, and loving. Well, hopefully you'll get to go play there one day again as, oh, a, as a musician. Oh, true, yeah. Um, other questions. So we mentioned your brother, your very famous uh, you know, Ben Harper, your yes, brother. But yes. your mother was also a multi-instrumentalist and uh, your, bro your other brother, Joel, is a poet. Do yes. you ever see yourself going on the road, all of you, and creating some form of art? Possibly? I mean, I think that that would be spectacular. I mean, I just think, you know, if you, if, you know, Every show that I play, there's always somebody who says, are you going to tour with your brother? Are you going to tour with your mother? You know, and I always say, you know, look, I'm ready. Mm -hmm. You know, they've got busy schedules and they've got things, you know, I'm ready to drop anything and everything. I think it would be a blast. Um, but, you know, coordinating my schedule is easier to do for myself than coordinating their schedules, which is which are more complicated and, and, and you know, Mm. difficult to navigate but as soon as they're ready I'm ready ah, well hopefully you'll put that determination and patience to, to good use that's exactly right <laughs> well how about we check out some other uh, new releases and first up Egyptian Belgium artist Tamino whose voice could be compared to the likes of Jeff Buckley Ooh. his second album Sahar which means just before dawn in Arabic is filled with pop rock and oriental tints here's a stunning track you don't own me you know the cause of every shattered dream Even when there's none to blame You always shout my name But I don't owe you But I've never owed you Taken from Tamino's new album that's all, that also features a track with Belgian pop star Angèle and was produced by Radiohead's Colin Greenhood. Um, now, anyone you'd like to work with in particular, Peter? Oh, uh, you know, I absolutely, the, I'm going to say this, I know this is a little bit wild, but you, when you said come on the show and you sent me a link to prior shows, you had Ben on here the other day. Ben L'Oncle Sol. Oh, yeah. Uncle Sol. And I thought, man, that guy is so great. I ah. would love to connect with him. I mean, there are tons of people in the world who would be fun to work with, mm -hmm. but 
I, he, he's just got a great vibe, he's a, a new beautiful music voice. Crush. And yeah, he's my new music crush. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly right. Ben, if you're listening. <laughs> Come on. <Yeah. laughs> well, how about we move over to English DJ, rapper and producer Shy Girl, who has been around for a while and is used to merging different genres with melodic pop and fractured electro and working with avant-garde pop producers like Arca, FK Twigs or Sophie. She's finally delivered her debut album, Nymph. Here's her track, Schlut. Woke up feeling like a slut, yeah, I like that. Hit a couple guys that can cut, I'm a bad bitch. Slow down, dirty when I like, and I like it, yeah. Tell you what I want, I better find you here. Ready and waiting and willing to keep me entertained. Twice nightly, weekly. Body right, pussy tight, you can tread it easy. Never mind, I'm fucking with myself. And that brings us to the end of this week's music show. Thank you very much, Peter Harper, for coming on the show. Such a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Uh, and if you are in France and want to see him live, check out his website or social media for the listings. There are a number of dates, including the first one at Paris's Trust Goal, which I believe is free and is tomorrow or tomorrow Tuesday night, night this week. Yeah. Uh, now that's it for a treat uh, for you. Remember, uh, you can find all our culture news on our website on social media accounts at Encore F24. The latest news bulletin is is coming up in just a few minutes. We're going to play out with French electro pop chanteuse Jeanne Adède. Originally from Reims, her previous albums earned her prestigious Victoire de la Musique trophies. Her fourth album, By Your Side, sees her return triumphantly and leather clad. Here's her aptly named track, Au Revoir.